Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. If you remember correctly, a few weeks ago I got in several species of U.S. native fish. Today we're going to talk about the smallest of them all. That's Heterandria formosa or the least killifish. They are absolutely minuscule, super easy to feed, very easy to breed, and just really perfect for a very, very small, heavily planted aquarium. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Least killies are probably the smallest known live bear, at least the smallest one that I know of. The males only get about three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters and the females get about twice that large at about three and a half centimeters. As you can see they have a horizontal dark stripe and sort of a iridescent quality to them with some vertical barring and a block, black dot in that dorsal fin. They are extremely petite, super easy to feed, readily accepting anything that you offer them as they are omnivores. One of my favorite things about them is they can take such a wide range of temperatures all the way down to 68 and up to 78 so a heater is really not required for most applications. They're also perfectly suited for a small planted aquarium of extremely small size where they'll continue to breed. These guys are kind of interesting because rather than dropping large broods, they give birth through a process called superfetation, which is where different uh, stages of larva develop at once. So they're, they give birth to singular or small quantities of young at once, I mean, almost daily. And they rarely predate on their fry. They come from the Carolinas through Florida where they can inhabit a wide range of temperatures and pHs, though almost always in harder water. This makes them really, really bomb-proof as far as an aquarium fish goes, and in fact a heater is probably not required as they take a temperature range from 68 to 78 or 20 to 26 degrees Celsius. The males are extremely petite, at about three quarters of an inch. You can see they have a really big gonopodium, which they use for their sexual reproduction. The females get to about an inch and a half or three and a half centimeters, though I rarely see them get that large. These are an extremely versatile little U.S. native that I think are really, really cute, exceptionally breedable as they're a live bearer. They do do best in tanks with low flow and lots of plants. You can see that this female here is absolutely pregnant. You can tell by that really round belly. All in all, I find them to be a really worthwhile choice for any level of hobbyist and super rewarding to keep. These are one of the few fish species that I really do feel can do quite, quite well in groups in a very small aquarium. You can see how tiny their mouths are, and it'd be important if mixing them with other species to make sure you mix them with things that can't outcompete them for food or that aren't particularly boisterous, as these guys are really mild mannered. Now, while it's really tempting to go try and collect these out of local waterways, especially if you live down south, I would really encourage you to buy them from a reputable breeder or at least be sure to really check the local collection laws and permitting required before doing so. All in all, I think these guys are just a really, really great live bear choice for any level of hobbyist and well worth the effort of keeping. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Now next weekend I'll be in Monterey, Mexico, and the details of that can be found on the events page on my website. I hope that I'll get to meet at least a few of you there. As always, let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, or if there's species you'd like for me to feature.